Okay, I'm going to leave you with this report here. Uh, this is how I'm going to conclude things for today. It's entitled, What the U.S. Scientists Are Forbidden to Tell the Masses as to the Gulf. This is by a Dr. James P. Wickstrom of drjamespwickstrom.blogspot.com. And he says, what you're about to read is what the scientists in the United States are not allowed to tell you in great fear of the Obama administration. They are under the threat of severe repercussions to the maximum. Scientists confirming these findings cannot be named due to the above, what we just stated. But what they believe, they want to be known by all. Take a U.S. map, lay it flat, and measure it inland. Just the minimum of 50 miles of total destruction all around the Gulf of Mexico, as what you'll read below will then make sense. The carnage to the United States will be so staggering it will take your breath away. Should what the scientists who are trying to warn everybody about is even uh, close to the truth. All of Florida will be completely destroyed, and everyone and everything on it. You decide. Everyone has the right to read what I have just written in this article, as well as what is written below. Uh, it starts out by saying, and again, I give you the link to this. Summary of what is happening. The estimated super high pressure release of oil from the Earth's crust is between 80 to 100,000 barrels a day. And again, there's a lot of conjecture on that. The, the flow of oil and toxic gases is, is it's bringing up with it rocks and sand, which causes the flow to create a sandblasting effect on the remaining wellhead device, currently somewhat restricting the flow as the well as the drilled hole itself. As the wellhead becomes worn, it enlarges the passageway, allowing an ever-increasing flow. Even if some device could be placed into the existing wellhead, it would not be able to shut off the flow because what remains of the existing wellhead would not be able to contain the pressure, in other words, because it's eroded so much. The wellhead piping is originally about two inches thick. It is now likely to be less than one inch thick, the thinning and, and thinning by each passing moment. The oil has now reached the Gulf Stream and is now entering into the oceanic current, which is at least four times stronger than the current in the Gulf, which will carry it through the world within 18 months. The oil, along with the gases, including benzene and many other toxins, is deleting the oxygen in the water. This is killing all life forms in the ocean where it's present. Along with the oil along the shores, there will be many dead fish, uh, many dead animals, and this type of thing. At some point, the drilled hole in the earth will enlarge itself beneath the wellhead, to weaken the area where the wellhead rests upon. The intense pressure will then push the wellhead off the hole, allowing a direct, unrestricted flow of oil through the hole. The hole will continue to increase in size, allowing more and more oil to rise into the gulf. After seven billion, several billion barrels of oil have been released, the pressure within the massive cavity five miles beneath the ocean floor will begin to normalize. This will allow the water under intense pressure at one mile deep to be forced into the hole and the cavity where the oil was. The water will be vaporized and turned into steam. Um, I guess they're saying that the oil that's coming out of there is, is um, very hot. Now, what I've seen, on um, if you watch even any of the regular feeds now, the oil that's coming out of whatever they're showing you, you can see fire. You can see literal fire. Uh, that It's like it appears for a second, and then it goes away. It appears for a second, and then it goes away in different parts of this, of where the oil is leaking out of. And he's got another report on that, and I put that in there as well. That's a whole other factor. Um, five miles deep, you're seeing fire here. It's crazy stuff, but let's go further. The water will be vaporized, turned into steam, creating an enormous amount of force, lifting the Gulf floor. It is difficult to know how much water will go down to the core, and therefore it is not possible to fully calculate the rise of the seafloor. The tsunami wave this will create will be anywhere from 20 to 80 feet high, possibly more. Then the floor of the ocean will fall into the now vacant chamber where the oil was. This is how nature will see the, seal the hole. Depending on the height of the tsunami, the ocean debris, oil, and existing structures that will be washed away onshore and inland will leave the area from 50 to 200 miles inland devoid of life. Even if the debris is cleaned up, the contaminants that will be ground that will they'll be in the ground and the water supply will be will prohibit repopulation of these areas for unknown number of years. This is the end of these scientists' information release. This is what he got uh, from these these scientists that want to remain anonymous and not for obvious purposes. So I'm going to leave you with that. These are definite things to be praying about. Uh, 
and you, I, hopefully you can understand where I'm coming from at this point, saying that, you know, if, by all means, try to get out if you can, if the Lord's leading you to do that. Uh, it looks as though Florida and any place near the coast is just going to be a very, very risky, volatile place to even think about being from pretty much here on out. And um, pray that if you don't have any doors, remember, the Lord can open the doors no man can shut and shut the doors no man can open. So if you don't have any options, pray the Lord Jesus Christ gives you some options. He opens these doors, that, and he can do it. I mean, he created the universe. He makes the sun burn, and, and the stars burn, and, and, and it's, he's the reason the, the earth spins, and that we have the right amount of oxygen and things in the atmosphere to live, and the, how the earth has a tilt on it, and how we have the seasons. And, you know, if he can do all that, there is nothing too hard from him. And that's what the Bible says. Call upon me, and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou, know, which thou knowest not. I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? He says that in Isaiah. No, there's not. You just have to have the faith to believe that that is the case. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things uh, of things not seen. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So these are things that you need. And pray if you're not in this area, uh, pray for those that are in there. Pray that God will open doors for them. Pray that, that the Lord will, will you know, preserve the remnant there and, and that he'll provide a way out and that he'll protect the innocent and, and the weak and the meek and the widows and the orphans and, and, and that many would actually end up even getting saved from this. What Satan intended for evil, the Lord would use it for good, that many would get saved and, and get right with the Lord. And There's a lot of positive things that typically come out of God's judgment. And although I do believe man created this event, um, if this is allowed to perpetuate and go to its logical conclusion, and this may be the logical ending conclusion, uh, it's going to be cataclysmic. Well, the, the report I just read is what I meant. It, it's going to be cataclysmic. And um, geez, these are just some things, some parting things to leave you with. I'll go ahead and close this out in, in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this, this day and time you've given us, Lord. I wasn't planning on doing the study today, Lord, but you, you put me here in, in a situation, and uh, I just pray it's a blessing to those. I pray that you use it in whatever way you deem fit, that not just what I'm saying, Lord, all I'm really doing is compiling things, but there's a lot of other people a lot smarter than me, Lord, out there that are putting this information out, the cross-confirmations. I just pray that you put the body of Christ uh, exactly where you want them to be, prior to this going truly cataclysmic. Um, I, I do pray for the widows and the orphans and the unborn babies and, and the children. And, and Lord God, that you would bless them and, and that, Lord God, your name somehow would even be glorified through this event. Uh, that you would truly open the doors, Lord, for people to be able to get out of here um, and that Satan would not be able to hinder this process in any way, shape, or form. I pray, Lord, that you'd forgive us for any and all sins we've committed in any way, shape, or form as we forgive those who have sinned against us, that you would cleanse us from presumptuous sins and secret faults, that they would not have dominion over us, and that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, and that we would not walk in fear, in fear of our own lies and fear of man, but in fear of God, and that, Lord God, you would guide us in all wisdom and knowledge, and use us mightily in the day and times to come, and that you would, through the body of Christ, save many. We ask all these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Oh, and one other thing I, I should probably say is that I don't really know at this point, I wasn't even planning on doing the study today, I don't know when I'll be able to do another study. Um, if I'm able to get out of here this week, um, and it really depends what's going on with my vehicle, um, if, if, uh, if I'm able to, to get out of here and, and implement this, you know, I'm not hundred percent sure when I'm going to be in a position to do another study. So if you don't hear from me for a little while, you know, just bear that in mind and, um, thank you for your prayers and your donations and your support and, uh, may the Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you. Thank you.